The Liberals tabled a motion to end the Defense Committee's hearings into the issue. The Conservatives and the NDP opposed it, but the bloc voted with the Liberals, allowing it to pass. The Defense Committee started its investigation after news broke. Former top commander General Jonathan Vance was facing allegations of sexual misconduct. His successor, Admiral Art McDonald, is also facing an allegation of misconduct. Both men are under military police investigations at the moment. We are joined to talk about this by Anita Vandebelt. She's Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of National Defence. James Bezan is the Conservatives' National Defence Critic. And Randall Garrison is National Defence Critic for the NDP. Hi to all three of you. Thank you very much for making the time for this. I appreciate it. Ms. Vandebelt, I'll start with you. Did you and your party move to shut down the Defence Committee's hearing because they're politically damaging to your government and to the Defence Minister? Look, we're, we're listening to the survivors. Uh, I had a number of conversations in the past weeks with survivors, with advocacy groups, with veterans who have all said that they're tired of the talk, they're tired of finger pointing and partisanship, they want action. They have specifically said, and some of them publicly, that they want the committee to wrap up the investigation, or the, the, the study, so that we can get recommendations to the government as soon as possible. In the 25 hours and plus of witness testimony that we've heard, what we're getting to right now is that it's it's the same thing being reinforced. It's that the system failed, that people acted in good faith, but it wasn't made for the chief of defense staff if, if it was an allegation against the chief. We need to look at the survivors. We need to look at culture change within the Canadian Armed Forces. We need to see about the incentives and reward systems. We need to change policies, institutions, make it more that women can come forward. And that is what we're hearing from survivors. What I did today with my motion was to make sure that we're listening, that we are focused on the people who are impacted by sexual misconduct. I, to follow up on that though, is it dis disingenuous to frame it as an either or? Can, can the committee not in, investigate and talk to witnesses and, and hear from everyone they think they should hear from and figure out the political side of things while at the same time your government not act on recommendations that have been before it for its entire last mandate? Well, well, first of all, there are military police investigations happening. There are two other parliamentary committees that are looking into this now. And we've had 21 witnesses. We've heard from the acting chief of defense staff, the minister for um, over six hours. We've heard from the deputy minister, the clerk of the Privy Council. And at this point, what matters is action. What but, matters but that's what is I'm asking. Can those two things not be done in concert? Why is it an either or? We, we have heard a lot of recommendations. What we need to do now is get those recommendations tabled in the House, get them to the government so that we can actually take action on those recommendations. And that's exactly what this was about. Uh, at this point, I mean, I, I would say that after 25 hours of study over two months, including 11 hours of extraordinary meetings that the committee had, um, this isn't about shutting down. This is about the fact there were only three witnesses left that hadn't been called. They're gonna get called on Friday. And I think what we're hearing though is that we've heard enough, now we need action. Mr. Bizan, on, on the point uh, Ms. Vandebelt is making around who you've heard from and from how long, I mean, there were uh, two different instances in which the minister appeared. Uh, we know, we're very familiar now, what his uh, argument is, that he did not feel it was appropriate for him to further delve into questions raised about uh, Minister Van, uh, about, sorry, uh, former CDS Vance. You can take issue with, with that, but what more do you expect to learn by calling more witnesses? Well, this is typical liberal playbook on how to do a cover-up. And they are shutting down our committee, just like they shut down committees and parliament with SNC-Lavalin, uh, with the WE scandal. And <clears throat> essentially, when we're starting to get closer to the truth, this is when they want to do their cover-up. And so we need to hear from some of the political actors, uh, such as Elder Marquis and Zita Estravis, the former uh, chief of uh, Chief of Staff to Minister Sajan and Elder Marquis was a senior advisor to Prime Minister Trudeau. Uh, we called them to committee. Uh, the Liberals are shutting us down before they can appear. And I think that is uh, reprehensible knowing that if, if we want to put, come forward with a report that is actually going to be substantive, we need to have all the truth of who knew what when and what they did with that information or didn't do with it. Uh, we've got some of the taste of it so far, but there's still two or three more key witnesses, including maybe the, the commander of, of the Canadian Forces National Investigative Service, who has also said that it's not political interference to direct his organization to do uh, uh, an investigation into uh, what happened here with, with the CDSs, both uh, General Vance and Admiral MacDonald. 
So it is about making sure we bring forward the information that the victims and the women who serve today in the Canadian Armed Forces are given the opportunity to have their voices heard and that we can put in place the policies to change culture, yeah. to change the military justice system, and ultimately hold those responsible to account. I, t I take your point uh, on that, but but I will point to something uh, that I read on Twitter from the group It's Just 700. I know you heard from them as they've appeared on our show. Uh, the committee seems, it's a support group for people who are the very victims that you mentioned. This committee seems intent on scoring political points by exploiting, exploiting survivors' stories. Every single government has failed our community. They are looking for more concrete suggestions rather than more politics. I I is this about politics to your party too, Mr. Bazan? This is about getting the truth and covering what actually happened so that we can make the changes to support people like Just 700 and other victims who have not yet to come forward. Uh, you know, I'm hearing as, as all the members of our committee are, we're hearing from veterans, we're hearing from survivors, and they want the truth so that we can have a report that is substantive and means something. By shutting us down early, we're not gonna be able to bring forward all the recommendations that are required to make the changes that are needed. Mr. Garrison, what more do, do you think you can learn from more wet witness testimony? And I ask just because, like I said, Minister Sajjan has appeared twice. We have heard multiple times what his uh, position is on why he didn't go further looking into, uh, into the, those allegations around Minister Vance. We've heard from the ombudsman, the, the former ombudsman. There's been hours and hours of testimony. What more honestly do you think you can learn that would advance your committee's work and is not about politics as the government alleges? Well, well, here's where we are. We're trying to find out why there was no investigation into a sitting chief of defense staff who faced serious allegations of sexual misconduct. And we're trying to find out why he was allowed to stay for three years after those allegations and even given a positive performance review and a pay raise. And what we need to know here at the end is, I think, most importantly, is this the responsibility of the Minister of Defence or was this the responsibility of the Prime Minister? The Minister of Defence says he let the Prime Minister's office know through his Chief of Staff. We would like to hear from her of who she informed in the Prime Minister's office and what she told them. We would also like to hear from Elder Marques, who's apparently the one who heard of the allegations and what he did with those allegations. What did he tell the Prime Minister? That will allow us to know who's responsible for this failure to take seriously at the highest level accusations of sexual misconduct. And we can't get to any of those issues that Anita's talking about today until we restore that trust that sexual misconduct is understood at the highest levels, taken seriously, and there will be action. The Prime Minister has said in a press conference, I, I remember him, I think it was maybe one or two weeks ago, he's asked twice, two different reporters in a row. Did you know, were you personally told of these allegations? And he said, no. Uh, I take your point that the, the, that the, the minister's office has said that the prime minister's office was made aware, but do you, do you, are you saying that you don't believe him that he said no? Well, uh, I would like to hear more on this topic because at one point I thought he said, yes, he did, but not the details. And so that's exactly why we're not done with these hearings because we don't know what the situation was surrounding what the prime minister knew and when he knew it. And again, this is about restoring trust in the system so that the system can get on with making those very necessary reforms in how sexual misconduct is treated and providing services to the victim, victims of sexual misconduct. Okay, I have to leave it there, I'm out of time. I do appreciate all three of you making the time for this this evening, thank you. Anita Vandebel, thank James you. Bazan and Randall Garrison, thank you. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.